for this, maybe. Let's see if this will grab both of those. So, okay. So I'm sure people on the internet want to see. So, um, <laughs> so we went, uh, so I'm going the wrong way. So, um, so uh, we met with Master Cho, and then this was an international gathering. So we had people from um, Taiwan, um, Japan, um, supposed to be a guy from China, uh, Korea, uh, Malaysia, and, uh, and this is a guy from Malaysia. His name's Didymus, and we are eating strawberries from um, the strawberry farmer. And these strawberries are the number one strawberry in Korea, super tasty, amazing. He came and visited us. We're in the Gopsung Learning Center here. Uh, this is Stephen Bolasan. This is the whole reason we met uh, was so he, Master Cho had a vision of seeing a chicken farm on his farm in Kailua, Oahu, so right on the North Shore. Um, this is the whole team kind of gathered there. I don't know why it's going out the first time, but, um, but so he trained a couple one day in the learning center, but the majority this is the back of the learning center, this is where they ferment all their FPJs and all kinds of stuff in this building. That's what I was showing us. Um, here's a good sample IMO4, so they have everything out there to demonstrate for us. Um, and then we went into building the chicken house. So this is the hutch for the chicks, uh, for the hens to lay in. So he has a very specific design of how to do it, and Master Cho was talking about the different in intricacies of it. Um, and it's all about love. That's the Korean love symbol uh, that Didymus was doing. And this is when we're almost done with the chicken bat, uh, hutch. You can see the top, it has a little black thing over it so light doesn't enter, and then the bottom has this curtain that goes down. So it's really about providing for them. But this is the inside of the chicken house. Those same chicken hutches are in each one. He primarily does egg laying as his thing. Make sure you don't knock it over. He has uh, 120 in each of these pens, and I think he had about 10 to 12 of them operating. Um, so the main thing we were learning is how to raise chicks because this is the most important part. Um, so Master Cho is teaching us. This setup you see is for brooders, or is, is excuse me, for broilers, and this is their brooder box. So it um, has a little flap that hangs down, also has a straw mat going up, and then it's prepared and ready for them. Um, this is kind of a little bit into it, so we're showing, I don't, my pictures aren't exactly in order, so I'll just kind of explain as I go through. Um, so we're putting the water in, and we're getting ready for the chicks and getting the box all together. Um, we built it all just with screws and wood, so it's easy to assemble, reassemble, disassemble. Um, and this is, we're getting the, right in front of that uh, brooder box you saw, we put down IMO4, and then, um, and they're putting down um, straw that's about three inches thick, and it's only about like five millimeters thick. So then the chicks have this nice area because they live in this first thing for the equivalent of the first seven years of life, and then it gets extended in, in three days, they're seven years old. So equivalent. So they, you wanna make sure that they have a really good spot. So this is Chris spreading IMO4, and then we're watering it in after the, the straw was put down for them. Um, then Joe got a nice shot of there. Um, and then we learned about the feeding boxes. So the one on the right is for little chicks. It's called a 369 box. Um, those are the measurements or the ratios of it. And then the one on the left is for um, more um, intermediate chickens. And there's a certain day that all this happens. And he really studied how to really provide the most care for these chickens. Um, and it's not Master Cho's invention, it's actually from a Japanese guy. Um, I can't recall his name right now. Um, but it's, he, he really was uh, adamant about getting the lineage together. So this is Miss, Mrs. Lee. She is a powerhouse. She, the entire time we are there, she was just nonstop working, just going, going. So what she's doing is she's carrying in uh, feed. We're making feed for them. Uh, this is a little lift that he had that you put all the feed stuff on, get lifted up. This thing on the right is a big mixing drum, so all the feeds mixed into there and mixed each day. And then you can see Miss Lee, again, powerhouse, going and unloading it into the wheelbarrows. So each of those 120 chickens got a whole um, bin of a wheelbarrow of food a day. Um, we're evaluating the feed, we got to taste it. It smells like really fresh bread. So not stinky at all, it smells really sweet. You can eat it, it tastes sweet. 
Um, so this is going a little bit back in time before we got the brooder together, but this is the brooder box itself. You see you got this angled platform coming up in the inside and we put straw mat across this and then it's insulated because um, it gets cold in Korea. But there's these vents in the back which are you know, PVC and these chimneys are put on top of these vents and this roof is put on top of that. So this is what it looks like and, it, and that's before we smoothed out the area for them to the chicks to go. But this, we set it here, um, we set it one meter from the back. Uh, there's very specific reasons to all this. It's not just like put it wherever you feel like, it's actually put one meter away so that uh, it, it all works out. And then we smoothed out the front area. And then this is building, the first one was for a brooder where it was angled wide. This is for hens where it's more narrow. So you don't want the hens, um, you want a longevity in the hens. Versus the brooders, you want them to grow real fast. Or the broilers, so, um, you want to grow the broilers. It's really fast. So, um, so this is what the hen box looks like. And so this is the important part of kind of what I wanted to talk about is that this is their first thing. You're putting brown rice in the front and this is days one through three right here in the front. Then the next time, and you're gonna put this lid over the top, this metal lid over the top. But then after three days, you're gonna remove this wall and now the chicks are gonna go out to this spot here. So uh, day three through six, they're gonna have this whole area to go to. And the idea is that it's warm here in their house, but they need to drink water. And so the water's at the far end. So the chicks run back and forth and back and forth all day. They'll run back and forth at least 30 times, if not more. And what that does, because the area isn't this huge thing, this whole chicken pen is a chicken pen, we confine the space, they're gonna run back and forth and it's gonna keep all the chicks at the same fitness level. You're not gonna get really strong ones and really weak ones because they only have so much air to grow and they're all gonna be running back and forth. And so this is really how this system works. That raising your first chicks and getting them physically active, like, like I said, the first three days is their first seven years of life, equivalent of like a kid. That, that first three days of getting them physically fit and getting them fit in the beginning is going to help them. Um, and so, so then this this here is the next five days after that is is open to here and then you know a certain. And I'm not exactly sure on the days. I haven't written down. I didn't. I was mostly videoing while I was there versus taking notes or doing anything. So a little hard for me to pay attention to everything that's going on at the same time. Um, but the, the general pr principle I wanted to talk to you guys about is this idea of them running back and forth and confining them to start. And 120 chicks are started in this box, actually 130, because 10 of them are roosters and 120 are layers started in this area. So um, so these are to raise breeding birds. These are to raise egg layers. Egg layers. So this is another look at it, seeing the, the mat coming out, and uh, the, of course the hay and the IMOs wasn't put down yet. We they actually have avian flu in in, um, in Korea right now. It's really hard to get chicks. So um, this is a close up look at their um, water. It's made out of PVC. There's a specific size to the width of the pipe and the holes and the tilt and everything. Um, this is their feeding trays that we're putting in. Um, and how you rotate them to get it for bigger chicks. This is larger chicks. See how the shorter edge is in the middle? It's because the bigger chicks are then gonna be eating there. So it's, as they progress in age, they're now gonna eat from the outside. So it's really, even the height of their chick box is really designed for them so they can feel comfortable and happy in their environment. Um, we did some measurements on everything to see the height of everything. And basically, because when the chicks can jump over the wall, they're ready to go into the bigger part. So the height is everything was important, the width of everything. Um, it's another look at the box just to see how kind of the day's progression as they go. Um, and then this was when we were getting ready for our brooders. We put this huge pile of brown rice right here. That's all brown rice. And you gotta put it a day ahead of time so it warms up and it's ready for them. Um, their water, so we're ready to get chicks here. And so this is their house inside. They got that little ramp to go up in the back and hang out. Um, and we're ready for the chicks. 
and then this grass, they were eating that grass, I took a picture of it, and then we har helped them harvest eggs. They put rice holes inside so the poop doesn't get on the eggs, so they don't have to wash the eggs. They all come out clean. So all the eggs came out completely clean. Uh, this like a guy from Japan. These guys are from Taiwan. <laughs> and so now we're ready to get our chicks. So just like goldfish, when you move them into a new tank or something, you put the chicks in here, leave them for an hour or two. You want to le release them in the morning, but you leave them in there for a little bit. Each of these boxes has like 60 chicks or 70 chicks in it. Uh, we put them in. Actually, each one has 100 because these are brooders or broilers. There is a hundred in each of those boxes. Um, and so we got our brown rice, we got everything ready. This is the feed formula. Clearly it's, uh, you know. <laughs> and this is the water formula. We made a special water formula. We weren't feeding them just water. Um, in fact, that last slide was the water formula. So we're feeding them a special water to help power them up because they've been in a box since they came from the factory. Um, and there we are releasing the birds. So we, we took them out, we set them down, we actually put them onto the rice pile so they knew they were like in a good spot initially. And here's all the little chicks. And we were really blessed to have these chicks because without them, um, it, you know, it's, it, it was, he got 400 chicks while we were there, which was like the only person in Korea that got chicks that day. <laughs> like, um, so you can see that pile of brown rice, they are going nuts right now. They're just eating just brown rice and water. And they're going in and out of their house. And they immediately they started drinking water. We took a few of them and actually pushed their head inside to make them drink water so that the others would learn from them. Have um, we given any grip? No. And I got smacked really hard after this picture. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's their water on the left, or the right, and then that's their food on the left, I think. I don't know. <laughs> um, but then we came back later that evening, so what happened later that evening is most of the chicks are supposed to be a little bit outside, a little bit inside, because that shows you have the right temperature. So what this means is, is it was a little cold. Something was a little cold for or the box in there was, um, so they're all inside. If the box was warmer, so half of them would be outside, half would be inside. But if he said it was okay and there was a certain noise the birds were making where he knew that, oh, that means they're all right. But this is that evening we checked on our chicks. Um, and this uh, still made, oh, so this was the next morning. More rice, more water, they're coming out, you know, starting to warm up, they're starting to do their thing. Then we went up to Muju, um, visited Pastor Lee, and we went over IMO um, one through six, learning all about that. Um, so our IMO one, we did it, buried it in here. Um, he has, we looked at his soil, we did some soil comparisons. That on the right is IMO five completed. On the left is, um, is stuff that we're turning into IMOs. We also, I got to see this when it was peppers. It was now cover crop because it was spring. This was his rye that he grew. It was really nice. I got to lay down in it. Um, this was the other field that wasn't naturally farmed. You see there's way more weeds in it and it's way more sparse. So this was his organic comparison that he was trying to do. Um, he has a really nice like Jawa sand crawler that he uses to move things around. Um, but this is us making IMO5, so we got two parts um, manure, one part, uh, or cow, cow, I, don't, I can't call it manure, um, cow something, and um, IMO4, and we're mixing it together to ferment. Uh, and he uses a power tiller to do it, and then this is a pile spread out, this is us making more of that. Then we actually made a special feed, this is making IMO6. So in that bucket, he has some uh, special liquid that we're mixing in. Um, one part IMO4, two parts IMO5, to make IMO6. Which then, this is IMO6 in its last couple days before he feeds his birds. He puts it in this little um, thing, and it's covered with rice holes on the top, and then this is scraped out to feed. And there, so the buckets on the right down there are the things he's gonna feed to his birds. Um, he had a really nice rooster. I got to go <coughs> in the pen. Uh, but don't tell the customs that. And um, got to see, no smell, everything. And his floor got richer since last year I was there. It really looks nice. Um, 
So this is a machine he uses to mix his IMO, like his feet. So there's some, there's all kinds of recipes for that. Um, and then we went back to Goksong and got to check in on our chicks. You can see he put a wall up on the edge because the chicks were getting stuck in the corners. Um, and then here's the little babies. <laughs> Their whole spot right here is full of rice. You can poke them and they're full of rice. <laughs> It's amazing. Um, they love that rice, they ate it. Um, and then here we are. Uh, we, we actually got to um, eat some of these chickens. And um, sorry, you guys are eating, but, um, but they had huge um, this part of the body, which is like part of their appendix. And then this is the intestine. It went from there to there. And this was only a five month old bird. Usually on a complete mature chicken, the intestines are only this long. And this was a five month old bird with intestines that long. So that's the whole reason why natural farming birds are better. And this is what we cooked from those chickens. It was really nice, tastes good. That's their intestines. That's the, um, the rest of the bird. And yeah, we ate it whole and stuff. Um, and then here's us making a water. So we measured it out, did the water. Um, and then this is a, us expanding the cage. So we made the, the this is day three back in um, Doksong, we extended the cage. We're now cutting bamboo for them. So we cut fresh bamboo so it's sweet. Um, and then he grated eggs like this onto this paper. And what he did was he put it, grated quail eggs. He has a whole bunch of quail eggs. You can use any egg, boiled. But he put it on this paper inside. And this is when he first put it in. And notice we got a bigger water now. That all the chickens mobbed to these groups, and it was just a frenzy. And they ate, they ate, they ate, they ate, and it was only enough for a little bit. And then we swapped the bamboo in for them right at the end with the bamboo. So they ate all this really good food, then they ate the bamboo. They really liked it, um, and it gets them trained to eat that. And then this is only about seven minutes later. They've eaten all the eggs and all the bamboo, and now there's nothing left. So they trained you, them. When you do the eggs, they did the whites as well. Yeah, the whole egg, just whole egg. And you saw we kind of ran it through a, um, a colander sieve thing, yeah, and shredded it up, and they ate it, and they just mobbed. And then so basically, I'm gonna wrap it up here. We just I, I was you know got to hang out with Master Cho, and uh, yeah, Doctor Park. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, and Dr. Park was just amazing. He translated for us really like, it was just a super wonderful trip. Uh, we got to meet with the mayor of Goksong County. Uh, he met with us. And um, and then this was the last day of, you can see now they got their um, feeders and they got more feeders because these are broilers, so they got to eat a lot. Um, and um, this is what their feed looked like. It's, it's so after, the rice is, so the pile of rice, I don't know if you can see it, it's right here, this pile of rice. Then they're, um, then they're fed the egg whites, or the, the, excuse me, the boiled eggs and the bamboo. And then after that feed is there, then they're given this feed in their feeders. They get those eggs in the first week? Uh, the first three days, three to seven days. Um, yeah, and there's grass mixed into this, and they're they're eating the, the mix, and there's a special mix for the um, But Joe got to do an IMO bath, which is a, a treatment, um, so that he could be in there. Um, he said he sweat a lot, and this is the last day. We're just making more food. Then we went to their county. Their county, these are all equipment that they rent. So they have this thing you could rent, these things you could rent, these things you could rent, that you could rent, and this is their county logo. Um, when we went to the mayor's office, and that's me and the mayor, uh, and um, and that's us spreading IMO in the field. We got to do all kinds of stuff. It was really nice to just do basic things all the way up to advanced things, and um, that's what I got. So it was it was fun. I appreciate um, I appreciate crowdfunding that we got to go and do. And then the last thing I want to share with you is that um, we were given these certificates of training. So this is issued from CGNF International, um, and um, so it has um, 
you know, it's like officially stamped all together. All the all three of these documents um, are stamped together. And um, so the chicken poultry training was really fun. Um, we're gonna be doing a um, swine training and also a plant training um, coming up. And so we'll announce those through um, CGNF Hawaii and. Um, but really, Master Cho, we, we had a um, sit down with him and he was really talking about, you know, like he's he's passing this along. And, um, you know, it's nice because the guys from Malaysia and Taiwan and everything, and myself, like, we're a bit younger. So it's nice he's like transitioning this through to, to get us so that we can continue to maintain the integrity. And like, you know, the complexity that's in this method is, is it's very intricate in many ways and details. And so understanding that and holding that and keeping that alive through CGNF so he can spread that through the world. Um, and he kind of handed a lot of kuleana on to us. And um, so I'm, I'm really, you know, it's, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, just from the bottom of my heart, I'm, I'm thankful I got to go and um, be there and then come back and share with you guys because, um, you know, let's, let's throw it up.